In this problem, we're going to consider a way that we can write acceleration using normal and tangential components. So we've got a jet plane. It's traveling along the parabolic path that is shown. And we actually know the equation that describes that path right there. When the jet is at point A, this point right here, we know that it has a speed of 200 meters per second. And we know that that speed is increasing at a rate of 0.8 meters per second squared. Our goal here is to determine the magnitude of acceleration of the plane when it is at point A. So because the plane is traveling on a curved path, a really useful way to look at the acceleration is using normal and tangential components. And when we're going to do a normal and tangential component of acceleration problem, we follow this typical kind of approach. So the place to start is by writing the acceleration equation. And we're going to do this in terms of normal and tangential components. Now, you've seen other ways to write acceleration equations and other kinematic type equations. We're going to use the normal and tangential components in this problem. Steps two and three, then, are going to work together. One of them is going to be to consider the tangential component, one for the normal component. I'm going to do the tangential component first. That's going to be step two. And then in step three, I'll go ahead and do the normal component. And finally, once we have those two components, we can go ahead in step four and find the magnitude. Now that magnitude calculation is going to be something like the square root of the sum of the squares of the normal and tangential component. While we have the figure up, and before we start step one, let me just go ahead and make sure that you understand what's going on with the problem statement. So if we look at the speed at point A, we know that that speed is 200 meters per second. Presumably, that is in the direction of the nose of the aircraft, like that. So that's V at A is 200 meters per second. And we know that that speed is increasing at a certain rate. So draw another vector over here. And this is 0 0.8 meters per second squared. Now, I'm intentionally not labeling that to say it's an acceleration or an acceleration in a particular direction. I just want to make sure that you get the point that that is in the same direction as this speed that we are given. What we're going to do in step two is sort of figure out what that 0 0.8 meters per second term really means. OK, that said, let's go on and do step number one, which is to write an acceleration equation. OK, so in normal and tangential components, the acceleration at point A is going to be written as a tangential component and a normal component. And the notation we use here is the tangential part is v dot times a unit vector in the tangential direction. Then the normal part is a v squared over rho times a unit vector in the normal direction. Now, we use these unit vectors to indicate the directions. And then the notation here is that v, of course, is the speed at any particular point. Rho is the radius of curvature. And then v dot is the rate of change of speed. Okay, So you can probably sort of see the direction that this problem is going to go. And as we do steps two and three, I think it'll become quite clear that this is a relatively straightforward thing to do. So let's do step two, which is to consider the tangential component. So we're given the information in the problem statement that v dot at a is equal to 0 0.8 meters per second squared. And really, what that means is that the acceleration in the tangential direction has a magnitude of 0 0.8 meters per second squared. And if we write that as a vector, that just is times a unit vector in the tangential direction. So in terms of the given information, that rate of change of speed, that really is just the tangential component of acceleration. So that was a pretty easy one to come up with. Here is our tangential component. Now step three requires a little bit more work. So let me go ahead and actually just start a new page here so you can see the whole thing. So step three is to do the normal component. Of acceleration. 
And in order to do that, you remember that the equation had both a velocity term, which we already know, it was 200 meters per second, and also had a radius of curvature term. So that's what we're going to focus on here. So the question is, what does that radius of curvature look like? Well, let's go back to the original figure and see if we can't make some sense of this. So let me use blue here. And you can see that the path that the plane is following at this instant is sort of got a, a slope to it like that. And the center of curvature of that path is going to be over here somewhere. OK, because that's the sort of concave side of the path. And then the radius of curvature is going to be that distance right there. Now, I have not necessarily drawn that to scale. I don't know exactly where that center of curvature is going to be. But this is the kind of calculation we're trying to make here. In order to do that, in order to identify the radius of curvature, we need to know something about, one, the shape of the path, and two, the position of point A. And so that is what's happening here in this radius of curvature calculation. OK, now the way that we do that is using a radius of curvature equation, which you've probably seen before. Uh, both in this class and in calculus, and that looks like this. Radius of curvature rho, 1 plus dy dx, the quantity squared, and then all of that in the numerator, that's to the 3 halves power. And then this is divided by the second derivative, d squared y dx squared. OK, so what we need here is to use that equation, which describes the parabolic path, and go ahead and do some derivatives and then see what we get. Okay, So I guess I should say that we're going to evaluate all of this at point A to get a numerical value for the radius of curvature. All right, So let's go ahead and look at this. We know that the shape of the curve is y is equal to 0.4 x squared. And this actually has units of kilometers. So that means dy dx, that's going to be 0.8 times x and then d squared y dx squared. That's just equal to 0 0.8. OK, now what we need to do is evaluate these things at point A. And we know the coordinates x and y for point A, so this should be pretty easy to do. What we find out is that, if we go back to the beginning here, A is at an x coordinate of 5 kilometers and a y coordinate of 10 kilometers. So if we go back to our equation, we're going to plug in x equals to 5 kilometers and see what we get. Okay, so let's do that on the next page. If we write this equation out, rho at x equals to 5 kilometers, we get 1 plus, and then 0 0.8 times 5 kilometers, that's 4. That's going to be squared, and then that numerator to the 3 halves power. And the denominator is just going to be 0 0.8. That was a constant for the second derivative. And if we work that all out, we get 87.62 kilometers for our radius of curvature. Okay, So that was a pretty straightforward calculation. And in particular, because the shape of the path was a polynomial, it was easy to go ahead and take the derivatives and figure that out. So what we can do then is we can write the acceleration point A in the normal direction. And this is going to be equal to v squared over rho times u in the normal direction. Okay, And then this is going to be written in terms of either meters or kilometers. Since I've got the radius of curvature uh, in terms of kilometers, I'm going to go ahead and write the speed as 0 0.2. And just to be for emphasis here, we've got 0 0.2 kilometers per second. That's going to be squared divided by 87.62 kilometers u n. Okay. I could have easily written the radius of curvature in terms of meters just to make the units match up. And so the way this works out is we get this to be 0 0.456 meters per second squared. And that's going to be in the direction of the, uh, the unit vector in the normal direction. Okay, so I've done the, the unit switch here, just to be clear. I've gone from kilometers back to meters. And I did that because the tangential acceleration was expressed in meters per second. 
Okay, now one thing we haven't done yet is identified what the normal and the tangential directions actually are. We haven't identified those unit vectors just yet, but it turns out for this problem we actually don't need them because what we want to do is we want to figure out what the magnitude of the acceleration is. So we're going to go on to step four and I'll show you how to do that. So step four is to make a magnitude calculation. So let me just go ahead and write the total acceleration at A. So this is 0 0.8 in the tangential direction plus 0 0.456 in the normal direction that has units of meters per second squared. And so if we're going to take the uh, magnitude of that, we're going to say the magnitude is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the components because the normal and tangential directions are perpendicular to each other. So we can just write 0 0.8 squared plus 0 0.456 squared square root and we end up with a, a the magnitude is equal to 0 0.921 meters per second squared and there is your numerical value for the magnitude of the acceleration at A. Now if we were going to go ahead and figure out what those normal and tangential directions were and write the vector for the acceleration of A, we would look at the uh, normal direction and tangential direction again in terms of that equation which describes the path of the plane. Uh, now we're not going to do that now, but you could do that again by taking derivatives and identifying the location of the center of curvature and then going ahead and figuring out what the directions of those unit vectors are. Let's review what we did. We had a plane flying on a curved path and we wanted to express the acceleration of that jet in terms of normal and tangential components. So we start off by looking at the acceleration equation which had the tangential and normal components listed and it identified the key quantities we needed to, to know. So that was V dot, that's the tangential component, and then V squared over rho was the normal component. The tangential component, as it turns out, was given in the problem statement of this problem, so that was pretty easy to do. And then on the normal component, the hard work revolved around identifying the radius of curvature. And because our curved path was actually a polynomial, this was actually reasonably straightforward to do. We just, just had to make sure that we evaluate the radius of curvature at the correct location, that is, at point A. We can then write our normal acceleration at A, and then find the magnitude by taking the square root of the sum of the squares. So the magnitude of the acceleration of A, 0 0.921 meters per second squared. 